Once you have a draft of your research report or thesis, here's a list of questions that you can use to evaluate how good it is, how you need to improve it, how you can make it flow better, how you can make it uh, just a more solid report that's more convincing. So let's go through th this section by section. On the title page, is everything APA formatted according to the most recent APA manual or according to your school's thesis format? Have you, have you done everything that you should there? Um, does the second question is, does the title clearly and even perhaps cleverly explain the study? You, you'll want to have the main names of the variables in the title there because generally when people search for a study, especially on Google form or a Google Scholar, um, the Google Scholar gives preference to the title. So you want the names of the variables in your uh, title, but you want it to be clear, but you also want it to be attention getting. Attention getting. So choose the title very wisely. In the abstract, does it clearly summarize everything? The research problem, the hypothesis, the methods used, who the participants are, the results, and the implications. Does it, does it summarize all of that? It's especially important to have the results there um, because that's what people are looking for to find out is this a useful study or not. They probably won't read, uh, most people won't read more than the abstract. Next, you want to look at the introduction. The first question to ask is, is the problem statement and a research question clear? Is it clear what you're trying to accomplish? And then when you move into the lit review, does it clearly relate to the problem statement and the research question? As you explain different variables and what we know about them, is it clearly linked to the research problem? Does the lit review cite all of the fundamental classic research relevant to the topic? You don't want just new research, you want the defining research. If it's some construct that was defined in the 1970s, you'll want to cite the fundament, the the, the early papers that, that defined that construct. And then does the lit review cite the most recent studies that are directly relevant to the topic? Now, don't just choose recent topics, uh, recent uh, studies because uh, uh, they have a recent date, but they still have to be relevant to the topic. So that's a kind of a, a good way of choosing references is one classic, one modern dealing with the same topic. Does the lit review pre present a clear and coherent argument that leads to the hypotheses? You're trying to write like this convincing essay where the hypotheses are the conclusions. And then when you form the hypotheses, are they stated clearly and unambiguously so that we know exactly what the hypothesis is? And similar, we know what the, exactly the null hypothesis is because that's what uh, what we end up rejecting with the, the statistics. Um, do the, and then once again, do the hypotheses follow logically from your problem statement and from your lit review? If you're just pulling them out of the air after discussing a bunch of variables, that's not very convincing. They need to flow logically um, from, the, from the lit review and they need to, uh, if they're true, they need to present at least a part of the solution to the uh, research problem. So that will be your introduction, basically ending with your hypotheses. And then you go to the method. And the method, you start off with this kind of this introductory overview, predicting a, presenting a big picture of your research. And so you, do you do that in that first paragraph? Explain where this method is going. And then you can ask, are the characteristics of the participants clearly explained so that the reader has a good sense of who actually participated in the study? Who is this sample of people? Because if you get a bunch of, uh, if the average age is 77 years old and they're 90% uh, white and 85% female, that's going to be a lot different than a bunch of 22-year-old college students um, so you need to explain what are the demographics of your uh, participants. Third, is the sampling method described clearly in such a way that others could reproduce it? 
or at least understand how uh, you did it. Now, if you use a convenient sample based on your own social network, they might not be able to reproduce it. So, so I always say, think about, could, could your little sister reproduce this? If you give the, the method section should be specific enough so that your little sister could follow it and collect all the data for you. And she'd probably have access to uh, your uh, uh, social network more likely than somebody else would. Fourth question here is, are the procedures used to obtain the data clear enough for other researchers to repeat the study? Do they know what questions you used on, the, on your survey? What scales you used? Where they came from? Uh, how you phrased the, the prompts. Um, uh, so that all has to be uh, clear. And then five, is each variable clearly introduced with a description of what it measures and some sample items? And so that would be, that's, that's five and six on this list here. Now in the results section, are all the results of the statistical analyses presented in APA format? The APA has pages and pages of how you present uh, results in uh, uh, APA format using the standard abbreviations, and you need to, to follow all of those. Is this the significance of each statistical analysis explained? Not significance in the terms of statistical significance, but just what it means. Why are you presenting this data? What, what does it mean? And then, are the results linked to each of the hypotheses? You'll have two sections, the descriptive statistics and then the hypotheses. And you need to uh, make sure that each of the hypotheses are uh, covered. And then, if you have graphs and tables presented in the results section, make sure that they're in APA format. There's lots of examples in the APA manual of, of how you do that. Now the discussion section, you start off with summarizing the study without using any numbers. Have you done that? Are the results that you found linked to past research that you covered in your lit review? Are the results linked to the research problem and the hypotheses? And then are the practical implications discussed? Because I personally believe that all research, all this seeking for truth, and this is this this comes from my 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 cr Christian convictions, that when we discover truth, we need to apply it and use it to make the world a better place. At the same time, we need to be aware of the limitations of our study. Are the limitations to the study presented clearly as well as uh, additional research that should be carried out? And then the appendices does. Um, for uh, for a thesis, you should have each construct should have its own appendix listing the complete list of items used to measure it, not just a two or three sample items uh, that you mentioned in the methods section, and clearly indicate which ones are reverse scored and which ones aren't, so that when you uh, go through the data, you have this list of all the items there, which ones need to be unreversed. After the an appendix for each of the uh, uh, constructs that you measured, it's good to put a complete uh, version of your uh, survey. The you might get a PDF from Google Forms. Then you take a screenshot and stick each image onto a page uh, um, in another appendix. And is all additional information that would potentially interest a reader attached? Just basically everything else that would interest them. So these are some detailed questions that you can go through, or you can even give these questions to somebody that's helping you, uh, who will help you proofread or give you feedback on your research report or thesis to find out how well and how convincing your research is.